Do you want fuel for your agents in Azure AI Foundry? Well, we're going to do that with a vector store. Microsoft has made this 10 times easier than it was prior to this. They've sort of embedded everything in AI Foundry with vector stores. So we're going to go over how to create one. We kind of went over this in an agent video, but I think it needs to be covered in more detail to point out some things. So let's jump right into it. So an agent is basically created, right? And we'll click into it and see the vector store here. So we created a vector store last time. Well, what's interesting about that is you used to have to manage all this separately. You still can, uh, but you can launch it all through here, which is really nice because you can also get to this through the API uh, and using Azure AI Foundry SDK. But What's cool and what I really like is I'm a visual person, so that's why I do these videos and that's why I explain how to do these things through the GUI. So you have your, you can see it's already enabled right here, right? So uploading files locally creates the vector index. And so we can go and look at that in another way under my assets and data and indexes. So you'll see the same index that is attached to the agent is actually right here. So what does this mean? This means that when you upload files to here, then it automatically embeds them and creates, you know, a vector store with it. So we'll go here, we'll take a look at the vector store. It reloads, refreshes, and really cool. So we can see what's inside of it is the file that we uploaded with this name, right? It's a PDF. We can delete it. We can, you know, search columns, add other things to it. We can go behind the scenes and add some metadata to it and look it up uh, in our backend programming, you know, via the API. So we can go and look at the data set here. We can see the index here, right? We don't have any index yet. And then the vector store. So this really gives you a control plane to be able to create the vector uh, store from the agent, which is super cool. So let's create another one and see if we can name it. So let me remove this one and then try to add it. Okay. You can give it a name, right? Test agent, create new vector store. You could select an existing vector store, but let's just create a new one. Upload a local file, which I'll do now. And you'll see it's not started yet, right? So you got to save and upload and we'll see that it takes a few seconds and then once it's done uploading we can see that the vector store has been created we can see it attached here and we can go view it back here in this view right so we have the name we have the id of the vector store and if we want to go add more data to it we can do that also through the gui again you can do this programmatically which you know, makes more sense, right? So we can manage it. And then we can keep dumping files into here if we wanted to test our early uh, rag, basically, which is kind of built in now, which is super cool. And as always in the Microsoft, uh, in their tools, they include, you know, documentation, which allows you to go and look up. And it's typically always attached up here in these learn more sections, right? So it'll give you quite a bit of understanding of how to understand the back end of this, right? On the back end, and if you searched, you know, search REST API in the filter up here, you get this manage REST API reference, which enables you to go and do all kinds of things, right? Create new vector stores programmatically, uh, be able to add documents programmatically, all of these things, which is hugely beneficial uh, that you can, you know, access the back end, access the front end, sort of see how it's all put together so that you can add this into your workflows. So this is super cool that this has been added and this really can get you up and running very quickly. And what I like about it is it's not a huge lift like it used to be. You're able to upload documents around what you're building your agent for, and then you're able to start getting contacts fairly immediately. Now there are some scaling things here that we need to be cognizant of, which one of them is, and let me go and find it, is vector stores are only capable of holding 10,000 files, right? So works for smaller scenarios, but you can also programmatically set this all up to be able to reference your vector stores, you know, 
on a on a, a case by case basis to where you know you do some parsing and some comprehension around what vector store is for what so that you give it that tool and the vector store that's appropriate for the question basically that you're adding your agent. So I really think that vector stores combined with MCP tools, which again, we'll go over in a standard uh, deployment for Foundry in subsequent videos that gives you even more flexibility there. And, uh, but this really covers starting me getting up and running with rag to be able to understand, okay, how am I going to put this together in a way that allows me to build an agent on my data? If you need any help understanding these concepts further, I'd be happy to help you. Uh, at solve systems this is what we do. We try to teach and empower people to go and understand what they want to build. And if we can help you build anything, we'd love to do that too. Please reach out in the description below. Uh, you'll see our contact link there and also like, and subscribe for future videos around Azure AI Foundry and then other Microsoft Stack videos. Have a good one.